how's it everybody uh, it's been a while since we've posted a video so we back so yeah we we on omakasa today so there was a couple of bronze that made appearance so we decided to come out again now today to see if we can maybe hook one maybe get a cob the water's not looking too bad today so yeah i think today is gonna be good but yeah we managed to net some mullet so if you guys are keen to see how to to net mullet um how to set up your live well at home to actually keep some mullet alive so the days that you can't net then you can actually um keep your mullet for for those days and then just let me know in the comments below if you want me to to show you guys how to keep them alive so what i want to do today is i'm going to try and use both drone casting and sliding so we're going to cast out the dead bait um, slide out the live egg and drown out the live egg and see which one is going to produce some fish so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my 353 stroke 6 blue marlin rod uh paired with my salt is 50 and i'm going to put out a slide but like i said the water's not looking bad at all i think i can get this back into the zone so i'm going to pass out the seven ounce slide sinker and then put on the non so yeah so the trace i'm going to use is a a biting trace which means it's only it's not a full metal jacket it's only like about a 400 three four hundred more piece and then a uh, piece of nylon on so i'm just going to use one circle look and then use that and then hopefully if there's a copy around and pick it up or maybe but i know yesterday there's been quite a bit of bronzes the guys have been cutting off not fishing for shark fishing for comp and yeah so i've got a nice seven ounce slide in here i actually made these sinkers myself it's quite pricey in the shops and also if you guys want to see how to make slide sinkers it's, it's quite simple i can do a video on that also just let me know in the comments below what i'll do now is before i sort out my livey and sort out my trace i'll put this out first just so the sinker can sit there's nothing worse than than putting your slide sinker out and then when you're going past or at least when you go out and slide you see it comes loose so that is it's not a, a nice feeling once you've put all the effort in if you had to wait and you put your slide out and the sinker comes loose while you're sliding you have to start the process all over again it would be quite frustrating so i'm just putting on this little bit of cotton just to hold the slide in place you can use the cable tie i normally use that while i'm drowning but when casting it out, I think the, the cotton is suffice just to keep it in place while you put in the slide out. If any fish should pick this up, the cob, uh, bronzy, round shark, spotties, even the leary, they will pull this thing loose and the cotton will break. So I normally use cable ties for the drone and that is more of a permanent feature because it's out further so the current can be a bit stronger out there. So yeah, let's go put this thing out and let's see what we can do. So yeah, so this is my trace. As you can see there, it's got my little circle look. It's a BKK circle look. I've got about uh, 500 piece of, this looks like about 150, 160 pounds still. And then a piece of one more. So this is the length of my, my trace slide. So what I've done was I've made these little clips for my ladies. So how that works is you just use a, some piano wire using one cable tie. It's my live here. Cable tie through the eyes. And that's it. If you're going to your rod, make sure you take your live in a bucket so you don't stress it out on your way. So the way I like to use 
my slide is just some snaps. Drop it on this way. Okay, my line. slide enough times. I like to slide 300 or keep like 300 tracks before I put the rod down. There's nothing worse besides you see the coming loose. You get the pickup and you see the rod pops up again. You get there and you see you burnt off because your slide wasn't all the way down. So rather take that extra couple of minutes if you think you're on the mark, just give another extra 50 or even 100 tracks on the rod just to make sure that you see what is that slide all the way down. So the setup I'm going to drone out is just like a small bait, so I'm not going to use a, a big heavy rod. So I'm using the, what is this, the 13 foot 6 pin regiment. Let's see. Yeah. So it's a 13 foot pin regiment, 2 to 5 ounce rod, with a pin clash 5000, I think there's about 300 meters of, 3 to 350 meters of, 30 pound Berkeley fire line on here. So I'm just going to drown this out like 150 meters um, into the zone. Okay, I think a, a pop over there might be hanging out. Hopefully there's no bronze going to pick up this. So the next lava I'm using is actually quite a small one. Again, same principle. One very important thing, try and match your, your hook size with your live. You don't use a massive hook on a small ivy and a small hook on a big ivy. So this is what I'm using as a little four demon circle. Nice light hook for this mallet. Same method with the cable tie through the eye with that little clip that I've made. And that's your bait. When you're rigging it up, make sure that your ivy is actually swimming around in your, your little bucket and that he's not like upside down and he's, he's very responsive when you move him around which means that when you put him in the water he's actually gonna do his job by attracting a fish there's no point in putting a big hook on you put your line out of your line just laying there and little bits of movement so that's not gonna create a lot of movement in the water I'm not saying that you're not gonna catch a fish on the front if the fish is swimming around it's better so yeah so it's a little plain one meter trace Short sinker trace and the six sounds with nice long wires on just so they can sit so you can sit it nice and flat. There's not a lot of current in the water so you don't need to cable tie or put cotton on this sinker to the opposite. I mean it's a light setup so you don't have to worry about the, the current in the piece. Really like using these for casting. 
two Kendora looks, a low float, and a retro on the inside. And the, the from the lower leg, from my tip of my finger to my shoulder, and the sinker just a little bit longer so we can flip it in part. So one of the things is if you're here in Cape Town, especially for this here on the Falls Way Coast, it's very good to get some distance on your past. So when building a bike, always think about clipping your bike, getting a nice aerodynamic bike, thin bike, streamline, that you can get good distance on your past. But don't just cast for, for distance, try and actually find a place where you want to put a bike. So my bike I'm going to use today is uh, a mallet that I used yesterday and a fresh piece of chopper. So you do get different methods of building bikes. I'm just going to use what normally works for me. Uh, this is what we call like a little strip bike to pencil bike. I'm going to use um, chokka as my base and then a piece of other on the sides. So it's not going to be a very big bike, just a small bike that you're going to get good distance with in your cost. So we'll start by unbeaten parts that I'm using. So again, this is just a bite that works for me. It's not to say that there's a, a right or wrong method. I just enjoy using this thin pencil bites of wood. Big carb with it, small carb, I even put a steam brush on it. So this is a presentation that works for me. This is what my bite looks like. Double, double look set up, I just move the float, just give it that small gap because oh, they like, normally like to come and grab the old bit. So what you'll sometimes notice is, is that when you get a cop pick up and you miss it, it grabs on the float and it pulls it down so it misses the hooks. So we just give it a small bit of gap just in case a cop come and it grabs it and then get it in the hook up with us. So the bites are laying for about 30 minutes now. Um, Slide light bike, nothing yet. Brown light bike, nothing yet. And I've just passed a chocka other bike, and that was also still quiet. So we'll see what happens. On the slide, but we missed him. See if he comes back at the second pool. So let's wait and see. coming back and that's all that's left over so I'm assuming it was probably a bronzy small bronzy that grabbed it there's basically nothing left so I'm gonna put another slide up and see maybe whatever was there comes back maybe just slide this ball alive and see if I can grab the whole thing That live has slid out, got picked up twice, reeled in, there was nothing left. So I think the only positive thing I can take out of that is that my sinker didn't come loose. 
and also that the slide actually reached the, the stopping. So if I if that to pick me up and the hook had to sit, I wouldn't have worried about being bundled. So I'm gonna try there now with another lighting, slightly smaller than the first one that I used. So hopefully this time it's not gonna be a miss and they're actually gonna pick me up. So I can land something. So then I'm taking my bucket with me. So I managed to put my second slide out. Oh, I'm just pulling stuff now. Woo. Good workout. <laughs> so yeah, so this is what my, my chokka had the bike came out. Absolutely nothing. It's probably cleaned off in the first 10, 15 minutes and I'll have lay for quite a bit. So I should have actually checked it quicker instead of looking at life for so long. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just change the a bit I'm going to try our Oculic Put on a dingo The water is kind of a flat, there's still some colour in the water though So Let's see maybe There's the water, it's done now Yeah, it's about high tide now About 15 20 minutes still high You can see the water is flattened up quite a bit Maybe as the water turns and starts pushing or going up, then the fish will maybe become more active again. Yeah, so I've got this, this Oculic. Good idea is actually to trim it or to clean it before freezing it. So I should have done that. So I have to sit and peel the skin off. So something you can do as well as you wet your, your chokka hammer but don't stick to your, your bike when, when you want to begin the ride So yeah, so this is my little octopus leg bait to pull the skin off Let's see what it looks like there Of um, course, that's how you can see the water I've got some colour in it so I'm not going to put any I don't know if you can just try something new and see maybe get a bite on this. So yeah, the water is actually going quite flat. Check there. So I think I'm gonna pack up soon. And have a bit of a rest and then maybe come out for the, the sunset again. See maybe we can get a, a pool later on. So it just shows that even if you have a drone, not always gonna pick up something on the drone but in my case now I had uh, the drone light it out and I had I had a slide light it out and the slide bait got picked up you know we must have fish it so it shows that the fish is not always deep at the back so you can read the water and you can see where the banks are where the, the holes are the channels then you can actually decide whether you really need your drone or not um, and not just by droning the only thing that you do well that is just my personal opinion it's not like a, a right or wrong way it's just the way i choose to fish this is my my live i put out earlier on we just got here it's now almost 11 o'clock This is with the drone. Okay, it's still in a good condition, it's still kicking. So I'll check it back. So yeah, it just proves the fact that even if you're drowning, you still not get a deal of fish. You don't mind the fish even a two. I mean that thing was out for quite a bit and it wasn't even touched. This was a water. 